Hey everyone, this is MOSFET, your simple tech news update. Lots more has been happening in VR and AR recently, so here's another roundup. Starting off, and a team at Meta have demonstrated a concept which creates an illusion where real-world objects can be interacted with in the virtual world. The user scans their environment, creating so-called digital twins, then some clever computation virtualizes physical objects, allowing for interesting interactions, for example moving virtual and real chairs around the user that you can actually sit on. In similar news, other meta-researchers unveiled Your Hand, a new model that brings photorealistic recreations of user hands into virtual reality. Their system can create high-fidelity copies of hands that not only render quickly, but also dynamically respond to light, much like their avatars they showed off a few months ago. All the user needs to do is scan their hands using a phone, and this model does the rest. Disney also showed off a new prototype for increasing movement immersion in VR too. Dubbed Holotile, this system can both enable users to walk in place like an omnidirectional treadmill, but also can move people and objects around too. As they state in the video, the potential applications for this are wide-ranging, and I would like to know more about exactly how it all works. The Dot Lumen headset is another interesting device that I came across recently. This is designed for blind people, working much like a guide dog by showing users where to go and helping them avoid obstacles. It does this with the help of both a vision system and a high-definition vibrating haptic feedback system located on the forehead. In their demo video, they even showed it integrating an AI helper so users can talk to it, for example asking for specific directions to somewhere, then it will show them the way. In similar news, this week Zin Labs unveiled what they call the first event-based gaze tracking system for mixed reality headsets and smart glasses. They showed off a developer kit which marries a low-power gaze tracking system with an AI vision system so a user can interact with the world by looking at things and asking questions about them. The system automatically knows exactly where the person was looking when the question was asked and the AI relays any relevant info. In their demo they showed the glasses responding to questions about plants and other food products the user was viewing in a store. Surgeons are another group that have been experimenting with mixed reality headsets for their work, and Copin is another entrant into the field, with a recent announcement that the optics and micro display manufacturer will begin providing their technology for the CR3 headset by HMDMD. This will enable surgeons to maintain a direct view of the patient while also being able to easily access critical info, such as live video feeds from surgical instruments and diagnostic images, by simply glancing up into the head-mounted displays. In other news, the Zapbox is an interesting $100 headset which takes a different route to all the expensive systems we've been seeing. Designed by augmented reality studio Zappar, this headset harkens back to the old Samsung Gear VR days, but this time the latest iPhones do the visuals and processing. It has a bunch of features like 6 degrees of freedom Bluetooth controllers, a 100 degree field of view, and full color pass-through. Notably, it can take advantage of the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max's ability to record stereoscopic video natively, making it a low-cost accessory for spatial video. In Haptics News and Afferents unveiled the Phantom, an open finger and open palm glove system that apparently tricks the user into feeling virtual objects. There's not much detailed information, but it seems to be similar to the electrotactile haptics research we saw last year. Afferents claims to have figured a way to hack the wires connecting the brain and skin, essentially injecting new information between the two and tricking the brain into feeling things that aren't there. The product won an innovation award at this year's CES, and I'm curious to see more about this. And ending this week with something more fun. Over on YouTube, Gamertag VR showed how it's now possible to play Nintendo 3DS games on the Quest 3 using Citra VR. What's interesting about this is that since the 3DS allowed you to play games in 3D without glasses, this emulator, when viewed on the Quest 3, adds real depth into the games, so apparently it feels like you're looking into a proper three-dimensional screen. It's a community effort, and you can find more details or get involved through the Citra VR GitHub page. Alright, that's everything for this update. As always, source links are in the description. Subscribe to the channel for more cutting-edge news, or check out the MOSFET playlist. See you next time.